session three of three. This is Predation, Cyber Dinosaur Time Travel Pokemon game for the Cypher system. Uh, this is the ninth of my Cypher session sessions this month uh, for March, uh, the last one. Uh, and uh, I'll have to think about my, my assessment when all, all is said and done. Uh, this is part of the Gauntlet Hangouts, uh, which is an online community of gamers associated with the Gauntlet Podcast Network. You can check us out on gauntlet-rpg.com. That's my new spiel. I'm kind of digging it. I'm getting into the, the groove of that one. So we're on the third session. The, the group has traveled, uh, has made their way on the journey, and has arrived at the location they have been heading towards. I want to set and frame that and then ask the, the returning players if there's anything big that I missed in that discussion. Uh, the key thing is we're in a uh, uh, in the essentially prehistoric times uh, with dinosaurs sent back here uh, via time travel from 200, 300 years in the future. A company called Sati, S-A-T-I, uh, sent people back uh, and essentially established a colony to explore here. Uh, however, uh, a couple of decades after that colony had been set up, the time travel mechanisms exploded and time travel to the future was cut off. And there's a lot of fallout, temporal fallout with anomalies and things like that. We're now two generations removed from that. Uh, we're like 60, 70 years down the line. And a lot of the people that live here have grown up here and don't know the future. And so the tech is a weird mix of people having access to cybernetics and nanomodules and certain kinds of high-tech implants, but they also use bone knives and uh, they have natural weave fiber clothing and things like that. Uh, there's this weird uh, uh, intersection of it uh, that I think is really cool. And we only see a little bit of that in the three sessions, but I think it's one of the, the most compelling uh, elements of this uh, setting from Cypher. So, Cities have grown up. SATI still has a lot of control. They have a lot of control within the cities, but it's a large organization that has fragmented. And so there are factions that operate within SATI out in different places. There are opposition groups, including a group called the Butterflies, uh, who are dedicated to destroying time travel. They, they want everyone to die when the asteroid hits sometime in the future. Um, but our our group is made up of people from a more heroic side of SADI. And they have been sent uh, to a northern outpost uh, because a scientist named Rados uh, has essentially sequestered himself out here. Uh, he's from SADI, and he certainly has SADI people working for him, but he's kind of gone off script. Uh, well, essentially, we have our, our Kurtz, Heart of Darkness uh, figure out here. The group is uncertain exactly how loyal his guards or his scientists are. They know that he has been requisitioning and reappropriating uh, SADI materials and resources and people. Uh, and the whole thing that sort of led to sending the group out here to check on Rados was the vanishing of a couple of scientists. It is believed that Rados has developed perhaps some new form of time travel technology, certainly some advancement. But it's also pretty apparent that if he has gotten that, he's not going to share that with anyone. So our group has been sent in to gain entry into the complex to see if they can rescue the people who were kidnapped see what they can find out about Rados's technology, if he has discovered something, and if he has, uh, get a hold of it uh, so that it isn't just held under his control. There are a lot of things that are unknown. Uh, they don't know the layout of this place called the Cador Complex. They know that it is built into an active volcano. They don't know the loyalty or number of people or names of anyone who is here from the sort of SADI side. You're not sure how many of them have bought into Rados's program, how many are just working there, that's unclear. Which means there are a couple of options that the group has in terms of actually entering 
infiltrating, breaking into the complex and, and decisions about how you want to proceed with that. Uh, they traveled overland. They were intercepted at least once by enemy forces, um, agents uh, who may have also been uh, on this path. They suspect that maybe butterfly agents are also coming to the complex, and so that could be a problem. But last session, they reached the complex. They can see the volcano off in the distance. Uh, they saw the, the smoke rising from it. They could see the buildings out in front of what looks like some, some doors out in front of it, kind of uh, 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 plants and trees that have overgrown to kind of conceal it from uh, overhead observation. Uh, they've seen some guard patrols with their dinosaur companions there. Um, and it's at that point that we stopped with that decision about how they want to go in, how they want to enter in, whether they want to go in hot, uh, whether they want to go in cautiously, uh, or which of those play to the strengths of the group or not. Um, and we will take up uh, at that point. So what I want to have is our existing characters introduce themselves and their companions, and then we will bring uh, Ellen uh, in. So Michael, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to work my way across the sheet. I'm going to start with Mar. If you could tell us, give us a one minute pitch on Mar and Mar's companion. Sure thing. So Mar is a somewhat flamboyant and kind of abrasive artsy type. She thinks up creative solutions to problems, although sometimes she takes a while to figure out what she's going to do. Um, so far, I think her main contributions to the party have been uh, thuggish, surprisingly, for such an artsy type. Uh, she is accompanied by Houdini, uh, the flashy raptor, who is jet black, and she likes to paint him in obnoxious colors just to annoy him. And he is mischief incarnate and keeps stealing things and pulling pranks and uh, causing trouble. And uh, I think probably you will be uh, taking over running him since Brian was doing that previously. Next, I'm muted. Uh, next is a uh, Lau. Uh, uh, Stephen, if you could tell us about Lau. Sure. Um, Lau is an empirical Terex who walks with dinosaurs. He's mainly quick, um, not very powerful, um, and but is very knowledgeable of dinosaurs, their habits, and their behaviors. Um, his companion, Posh, is a uh, pterodactylus and is a relatively new acquire, uh, uh, acquisition. And they're still feeling each other out. However, has been very beneficial so far. Excellent. Um, and uh, then uh, Kaylee. Kyle, could you tell us about Kaylee? Yeah, Kelly is a volcanic cairn who moves like a raptor. Um, he he is very quick, um, agile, good at climbing, that kind of stuff, um, and like and pretty powerful when he comes out of nowhere and and hits a bunch with whatever weapon he's got. Um, Dino companion is September, um, who's like a mid-sized T Rex. Um, and yeah, last, last time we had a really fun scene of trying to coax the T-Rex to get on a gondola with us. Yeah. Did not was, want to go. <laughs> that was good. Um, and, uh, 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 so we've got those three characters. We're going to assume that Brian's character, we've kind of, well, he is off to the side, standing guard, that kind of thing. So he is, he is off. But, uh, Ellen... Tell us how you're picturing Halen. Um, I'm seeing Halen as a um, tricky. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> you Rosie. Um, as a a tricky mechanic. So um, she has all these subdermal. Um, uh implants that um i i'm not entirely sure what what i get to do with them yet but they sound yeah. super fun um 
and I'm more interested in the technology and the fun ways to manipulate technology and biology than um, actually being the good guy. <laughs> That's just um, a, a bonus. And my cute little Dino is Blink. And Blink is, is a clever Anzu. Um, it's beautiful, beautifully colored looking at the beastery there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, um, Blink helps me with my tricky hacking and that kind of stuff. So it's a it's a fairly clever clever animal there. Yeah, apparently, right. it'd be fun to see um how how Blink plays out. Um, and uh, who was running Brian's character? Was that you, Kyle? Uh, uh, Kyle, so you'll be doing Blink. Cool. Uh, so let me tell you a couple of things about uh, the mechanics here, Alan. Have you played Cipher before? Okay. Uh, so uh. The ciphers of the name of the game are these one-use items. You'll see that under other notes. So you've got the dino senses and the manifestation. Essentially, they're one-use special items. Everything else, what we'll do is you'll say what you want to do, and then we'll kind of set a difficulty for it and kind of work on how to get that difficulty down. And you say, oh, well, I kind of have a skill like this, or the situation is sort of like this. Um, uh, it is a kind of a negotiation game. It looks like there's a lot of like heavy details and, and numbers and crunching and text bits. It's actually much easier than it looks. Um, uh, I think that's to to draw in people who are coming from like D and D who want a high crunch system. I think it 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 simulates a high crunch system without being quite as high crunch as it as it might look. Um, when we uh, we've got a role for your party, uh, the link for that is on the. Uh, R F Y P tab of the sheet. And most of the time you're only going to be rolling uh, a D 20. That's, that's what you'll need to roll. Essentially we'll, we'll negotiate down to where it is and we'll figure out what you need to roll and then you'll roll it. Um, so uh, Ellen, uh, you have been sent as a technical person, essentially Perhaps after the group had had been dispatched, they realized that they perhaps needed somebody with stronger technical uh, uh, scientific hacking skills. Uh, that while Lau has some some knowledge, he is not a specialist in those kinds of things. Um, of the other three that are here, uh, um, Kaylee, Lau, and Mark, who do you think you've worked with before? I think I've I've probably worked with Lau. I think um, I've probably been the more more um, tech tech that's been sent in um, to some jobs before. And uh, Lau, uh, uh, what's your impression of of Halen when you've worked with her before? What what has been your impression? Um. Halen's been good at her job. However, I find her um, um, not necessarily neglect, but the, the way that she doesn't pay attention to the dinosaurs and their interactions, she seems more focused in on the tech and the shiny stuff. Okay. Yeah. And you are certainly focused on on caretaking and the, the animals and all that. So that, that makes sense. Um, um, it, I think, um, I just think that, you know, the dinosaurs are, you know, tools. <laughs> like, if they can be useful, we'll use them. Right. And, and that is a, a, a common attitude. It's one of the, the strong tensions in the setting. Um, so I'm going to, uh, uh, obnoxiously GM horrifically, a hard frame, uh, Halen on site. Um, uh, uh, essentially that you guys found that temporal anomaly at the end of last session. Um, Halen would have been waiting nearby. Um, and what would you have told Halen about your journey here? Uh, 
Wow, you've worked with her before. So, what, what, what's what? Anything that sh- that Halen needs to know? Um, <clears throat> I think I would. Uh, first of all, I would be a little bit wary of Halen because we weren't made aware that there would be anyone else joining us. So, I think I questioned her for a little while to make sure that she isn't a plant from uh, Sadie, um, who was working with this guy. Um, but after after I think my guard is down, I think I would tell her that the trek was difficult, and I'm very impressed that she made it here on her own. It took all of us to be able to get here, and it's very impressive that she made it here by herself. Uh, uh, Helen, how do you react to compliments like that? I I see them as unnecessary. I, you know, I got here. What's the big deal? Like, you sh- yeah, just, just let me get do my job. Uh, I assume later on it will transpire that uh, Hayden was much closer, and someone sent a, dr- a cyber drone to 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 bring bring her the message. So, uh, so so the question now is: you have the four of you, you have your dinosaurs, uh, you have this facility. You have some options about how you wish to proceed. Whether you want to gather more information, whether you want to head in, whether you want to send the T-Rex to start biting off heads. Um, there are a lot of options uh, uh, right now. Um, what do you think? Um, Mar, what, what's, what's your general feeling about this? Well, okay. One thing to reiterate that we learned uh, at the end of the last session, I questioned the tem- temporal anomaly before it collapsed. Oh, that's right. And we learned that at least some of the scientists are here against their will. They were kidnapped. Um, also, it looked like it, we had been briefed previously that this guy had been experiencing experimenting with time travel technology and was roadblocked but seemed to be getting somewhere at the same time. And the, the equipment that he's bringing in here looks like a variation on his existing designs, but meant to operate on a much larger scale, like to open a big portal. Um, that's relevant information that, you know, I would pass on to our new member once I was satisfied that she was, you know, on the up and up. Okay. Uh, as far as getting into the mountain, um, do I remember that we had blueprints or something like that on a thumb drive from the beginning? No. The thing you got on a thumb drive was a rundown of Rados's previous work. That's what you asked. Oh, okay. Well, uh, with any luck, there's more than one way in is sort of how Matt is thinking. She's not the direct approach kind of person. Um, How big is the volcano? How long would it take to scout around it? I would say uh, you could probably spend a couple of hours checking out the perimeter. Um, you have uh, posh, so that provides an additional level of aerial information. Yeah. Um, and, and certainly, you could could do that. the The risk that is on the table for that is being spotted. Is being spotted, but you know guys could certainly give it a shot. Well, and we have a Terex. Uh, Lau might be able to give us a sense, like, if there are multiple ways into this complex, probably there are local dinosaurs or small mammals that know them, and I know he's in tune with them. He might be able to, uh, you know, get a sense for where they're nesting or layering. That's sort of where Mars brain is going. Lau, Halen, Kaylee? What so do I you think, think about that? I think Lau um, likes Mars' idea, um, suggests that we free the scientists who are being held against their will, either as a distraction or because it's the right thing to do. Um, and uh, looking to see if there's any native... Um, dinosaurs that know their way in and out or anything like that would be a good idea. Um, specifically, Lau's curious if Halen was given any additional instructions or additional information. Yeah. Halen, were you given any additional 
uh, 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 cool things that you know about the complex? I would say I would have been. You wouldn't sure. have sent, sent me in blindly. Tell me, tell me what you know. Tell me something that you know about this complex. Um, some of some of the additional entries are booby trapped, and um, that there is one particular local dinosaur that is um, our you know go to, um, and their name is Radio. That so they've put a, uh, a like a an enhanced dinosaur in the area um, uh, as an observer uh, uh, named Radio who has been going around and might be able to track him down to get info. And you know that there are additional entrances, but that they are probably booby trapped. That sounds good. Yeah. I like that because that's stuff we can work with. Uh, does that answer your question, Lau? Oh yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, and what's what's Kaylee's take on all this? Um, I guess I guess Kaylee's curious. Um, you know, once once we we do that scouting and find our way in, um, what like what our approach is? Like like is the end goal of this to like break in and cause a ruckus, or are we trying to like pretend we're defecting from Sadie and like try to social our way in to then cause a ruckus and. <laughs> It all ends in ruckus, but okay. Right. In group, they're not very slick. Well, that's, that's, um, that's Halen's quite interested to see this tech. Like, if I can, I want to like steal some of their knowledge and or tools. Um, that might be possible if you know once we get in there. But I, I thought we were directed to go in and rescue the scientists. Yeah, in and out quietly seems smart. Even if there are traps, I think coming in a back entrance that they are not expecting because it's supposedly trapped might be a good way to go. If I can be excused for wandering off into left field just for a second, uh, well, you asked us at the end of last session to remind you that we oh, had XP yeah. that needed spending. Yes, thank and you. I'm curious to know. I'm th I'm thinking I have been using and abusing my relationship with uh, Houdini enough that if mm -hmm. that is something that I can develop with my experience, I would be interested in doing that. Okay, so what do you think is appropriate for that? I'm not. I'd have to to go it, dig into the predation book to see how they advance dinos. So. We kind of know what you can buy generally with Cypher. What, do you, what would you think would be a, a possible advance there? Well, I'm wondering, I know that the difficulty of interactions with Houdini for me is currently three. And I'm wondering if I can like spend, a, you know, the four points that would normally give a skill to reduce the, in, the interaction DC by one step. That, that seems fair to me. Um, uh, in fact, uh, uh, if you want to put those four, use those four on the table, um, we've only rarely used that interaction role throughout the course of that because that's a mechanic we haven't leaned back on. Uh, so I will say that if you spend that four, you won't have to make any of those roles this session. Okay. Does that um, seem fair? By all means, honestly, it seems a little too generous, but uh, I'll take well, it. We don't hit those roles that often, so I don't want you to spend points on stuff that we don't necessarily use as much. Okay. It just seems a natural progression. Like, what has she been doing? Well, she's been being a thug, but she's also been relying on her sneaky partner a lot. Okay. That, and that makes that makes sense. Uh, what about you, uh, uh, Stephen? What did you want to buy for Lau? Um, I was actually thinking I'd buy a level of effort. Okay. All right. Those four points, yeah. That sounds good to me. And Kaylee, um, uh, Kyle, what would you like to buy? Um, so I'm worried about being at zero and then that being a problem. So I might wait until an experience comes up and then that and is then fair enough. Them. Yeah. Um, we had a player with nine points, uh, in the, the final session of unmasked and burned through all of them. So, uh, that was delicious. They did buy <laughs> one thing, but, uh, uh, okay. Uh, so 
I heard scouting, right? That's that's at least step one. Um, so, Lau, this does seem like your uh, your area. So let's check in with you, and then I'm going to check in with everybody else and see what what they're doing. Um, does that seem fair? Yes. Okay. Uh, so tell me what your goal is here. What is it that you want to definitely get out of this? Um, I would like to, uh, primarily, I think our best bet is to find radio. Okay. Enhanced dinosaur to get a lay of the land. Cause I think they would be able to provide us with more information than an hour or two scouting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I will say that that's going to be a, let's say, you know, that they're, they're in the area. They are trying to keep out of sight. Let's say that's a difficulty five. Okay. And so for Ellen's benefit, well, difficulty five, this is where Cypher gets weird. Um, uh, basically difficulty five means you times that by three and that's how much you have to roll or better on a D20. Uh, so he's got that difficulty five. Now he's going to, now Steven's going to try and convince me why that difficulty should be, should be less uh, uh, with his various skills. So what do you have that's going to take that down? Um, so the first thing I have is a skill of perception. Okay, difficulty four. Okay. I also have a power called discover dinosaurs, where mm -hmm. I can search an area and find dinosaur activity and gives me additional facts and things like that. Perfect. Uh, spend that. Uh, difficulty three. Does that seem fair? Yes. Okay. Anything um, else? And I'll spend one level of effort off my uh, intellect. Okay. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And that gets me to a two. Two. So you need a six or better. I'll roll that. And I rolled a 17. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, uh, all of you will will wander uh, uh, around uh, for uh, a while, uh, and eventually uh, you are able to find some tracks. Um, and follow them back. They're they're very carefully co concealed, but you know kind of what you're looking for, uh, and eventually you'll find kind of a, a shelter. It's crudely put together, uh, but uh, it is, is there. Um, and you will see that there is a, I'm going to say this wrong, uh, uh, Stygimolic. Um, and it is, has all kinds of implants on it. Uh, little brain box implants and little voice box implants and uh, all of that kind of thing. Um, and it kind of sees you coming, but it, it knows to expect and uh, it will come out and looks at you and hello. How are you today? And I think Lau will kind of uh, step forward and do the the greeting, you know, kind of a head bob and say, good radio. Yes. Um, Run reciprocal greeting protocol. Complete. <laughs> um, you seem to be doing well. We are here to receive your data. To find parameters. Would you like a snack? And I pull something out of my pack while our friend Halen addresses your data packs. I am a good dinosaur and I would like a snack. And it'll put out its little hands to you. <laughs> I was going to say, Mara is keeping an eye on Lau, half waiting for him to lose his. Uh, composure regarding what has been done to this creature. <laughs> oh, no, I think it's perfectly fine. <laughs> so I think that Lau, you know, will walk up and, you know, feed radio some and kind of motion Halen to come up. And I think Lau's working to keep radio 
calm and um easily accessible by Halen. Okay. Uh so then Halen, would you like to try and, and sort of pull the surveillance data out of the, the setup on radio? Yeah, and I think um there's probably some sort of um mapping and um GPS tracking that um will also be of benefit. Yeah, he's had to do everything on the ground. He's probably got positional data because they don't have GPSs. He has to do all that kind of uh, lay of the land, laser sighting uh, uh, stuff. So so I will say to get all of the data and get really good data, that that's going to be a difficulty five for you. Um, so let's look at your skills. You have I'm technology. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hacker. Uh, Two okay. intelligent Hacker. points. Oh yeah. Um, if you spend that, uh, then you don't even have to roll. That's what that's about. Ooh, cool. Yes. Okay, so two intelligence points. It takes your current intellect pool down by two to a sixteen. Or actually, uh, I, this is where it's going to get weird. I've got okay. it. Sometimes system. Uh, you have an intellect edge of one. That reduces the cost of things that you do with intellect, so it actually only costs you one point. Oh, sweet. The problem is, of course, I'm going to tell you now, all of those points that you spend are also your hit points. Okay, nice of you to tell me after I've made that decision. <laughs> yes, <of course. laughs> um, so, yeah, um, it's clear that radio has surveilled the area, has come around repeatedly. Uh, he'll have general senses of what the guard rotation is. Uh, and uh, he will have uh, uh, some access points. Uh, there are beyond the sort of the main doors that that set of buildings are are built around. There are three possible access points. One of them is going up to the top of the volcano and going down. Not a great plan, but possible um, and certainly unexpected. Um, uh, another one uh, probably means uh, uh, one or more of you going in without the larger dinosaurs. Essentially, there are some uh, air conditioning slash venting systems that they clearly have in there uh, that a person or one of the smaller dinosaurs could could get into, say the the raptor or the Anzu. Um, the third option is that there are some lava vents, uh, 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 larger ventings, uh, lava tubes that uh, can be found at the rear of the volcano from where this is, and uh, certainly uh, radio has seen. Uh, di small dinosaurs go in and out of there for warmth um, and uh, has seen that, uh, you know, there is venting and smoke. So it seems like a possible method of entry. Are you finished withdrawing the data? Yeah. Request run good boy one. Affirmative? <laughs> Affirmative. Ah! Radio is a good boy. Complete um, communication transaction. Was there anything else? I'm done. Lo, you want anything? Are you adequately provisioned here? Yes. I have hunting protocol three. Um, is it possible to s remain in com uh, radio communication with radio? While you're outside the facility, yes. Okay, but not once we're inside. Probably not once you're inside. Okay. Um, I think that radio can be our backup. So if we need something, Radio can provide a distraction. Um, I imagine this would be something like, you know, herding dinosaurs. So, you know, if they're large, so that they run towards, you know, the entrance or 
if they're small, maybe running them into hurting them into one of the booby traps or something like that. Radio can do that. Please set level of self sacrifice from one to five. I think uh, one is no self self sacrifice. That is correct. Is total. I think Lau reaches over to set it to one, unless Halen does something else. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to bump that up a couple of notches. Look, we want to do this right, and, you know, if if some machinery gets broken in the, the process, that's the, the price. I imagine that this is like a little button, and Lau sets it to one and then turns away, and Halen goes boop, boop, boop. <laughs> little, 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 little readout goes up there. Uh, affirmative. Uh, set time parameters for operation. I think we will contact you once we enter, uh, e you know, exit where we think radio uh, will reach. And um, if you see any disturbance like uh, an explosion or gunfire or any of us in need of help, that's whenever you should do your distraction. If you see, um, I will engage fuzzy logic. <laughs> if you uh, otherwise wait two hours before proceeding with the distraction. Affirmative. And I, warn, I warn radio. Do we have Do we have any idea of these missing scientists? We have a list. Uh, just the, uh, the 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 couple names that you've got off of the the, the last people that were taken. So I think that's what we do is we go through a list of the people that we know of and we say, if they identify with any of these names, they are friends. Okay. 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 Slow down. Slow down. Not a computer. Okay. Got it. And I pat him on the head. I say, good radio. Affirmative. Okay, it seems like we're ready to go. Yeah, it's so, that awkward silence there for yeah, a bit. Like, as we're getting ready to leave, uh, Mar will accidentally on purpose leave an item of her equipment in the tent. And then as they get a few faces away, go, oh, I forgot something, and go back and turn the dial back down. <laughs> it watches you. Just nods. <laughs> Uh, uh, so what's the plan? You guys head out from here. You have some options. Uh, uh, are you going to go to the front gates and try and play yourselves off as savvy people? Or are you going to use the lava vents? Or are you going to clamber up the volcano? I'm. Let me put in a soft vote for fumaroles. Do we have any way to tell, well, I mean, other than live dinosaurs coming and going, which introduces its own complications, do we have anyone, any way to tell which ones have poisonous gas in them? Any ideas, people? I'm sure I've got a, you know, toxin detector. Um, yeah. You're sure like you can figure it out? Yeah. Been hanging around volcanoes okay. long enough. And again, we know these are likely booby trapped, so let's pick one that dinosaurs have been going in and out of, because if it were going to go boom, like right at the entrance, then it would already have done it. Lau, can you guide us? I think so. And I think um, I'd also like to, uh, we probably want to pick one that the T-Rex can get into. I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Um, and um, what about probably trying to pick one where there's like a little flock of, you know, small dinosaurs, compies or something like that so that they can go in front of us like the proverbial 10 foot pole. Yeah. Okay. So the challenge here now is essentially making your way carefully uh, and not making a whole lot of noise, not uh, uh, drawing attention. So my typical way for doing that is to have one person roll with a difficulty, um, uh, and this will be a speed test. Um, uh, so who wants to be the 
the stealth person to kind of do this test for the group moving through the wilds. Kaylee's pretty good at that stuff. Okay. Um, so there are four of you plus your dinosaurs. So this is a challenging thing. Um, they have guard patrols. You know something about the lay of the land. So I'm going to say in the end, we're going to have a difficulty of five for getting over there without any of you being spotted on the way in. Um, so, 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 um, I think that part of, part of the equation, um, could be, um, September's probably put Kaylee, like, up in a tree with, like, mm. a pretty good vantage point, um, okay. so there's probably some sort of, like, directing stuff going on, um, so maybe the, the climbing, climbing skill could, could help with that. Okay, uh, a climbing skill, and then uh, you can use your companion. Since you're using your companion, you can use your companion's ability as an asset. That'll go down too. So we're at a difficulty three right now. Awesome. Anything else? Um, yeah, I'll I'll do some do some speed speed using. Okay. Um, uh, so two points. And and I feel I feel good with that. Difficulty is two, so all you need is a six or better. First roll of the night. Here we go. Oh. Yeah. That, that was a three. Do you want to spend a point to reroll? Or do I, I move to the result? The uh, six or less. I do my GM hard move. Oh, uh, well, we even... Yeah, yeah. I, I hung on to them for a reason. Um, that would be a bad, bad start to, to an intricate plan. So fair enough. That's 15. That's much better. Um, so there is that bit where you actually probably kind of freeze as you realize that there is one of these patrols cl much closer than you expected and kind of do the signal to everyone to, to, to stay down. Um, probably as they're doing that, you'll, uh, you know, uh, kind of crouch and wait. Everyone gets silent. You probably hear Houdini chewing on something, you know, um, but eventually they will pass by and uh, you can move uh, along the tree line. You're spotting, moving people forward. Um, again, great big trees, wild underbrush. Part of the advantage you have is that none of these woods here are tended. They are all crazy wild uh, grown up. Uh, the disadvantage, of course, is that there are, are horrible things lurking in the brush, uh, uh, spiders and insects and things like that that are mammoth. Um, but eventually you will, will move up and uh, get to the tree line uh, uh, on the, the far side of the volcano from the facility. Um, and you will see that there are a couple of these uh, uh, vents uh, the, the lava tubes that are there. Um, and it looks like you can spot two of them that definitely generally have tracks by them. Like, like dinosaurs clearly go in to, to catch, uh, uh, you know, some of the warmth and heat that comes out of there. Um, and so how do you want to proceed? Um, Lau, can you identify what species by the prints and we can determine which one is less likely to hole up in here or less dangerous if it is in here? I was thinking um, what I'll do is I'll go around and I'll see if I can't track some of these down, um, the smaller ones, not the big ones, mm -hmm. and see if I can't kind of herd them back towards the vent so that not only do we know what they are, but we also have them kind of flushing things out. Okay. Um, so, uh, so we want to kind of find like some of the pygmy raptors yeah. that are around here, those kinds of small packs um, and drive them forward. Um, all right. Um, that seems like a, a, a difficulty for, I mean, kind of driving them. You have some uh, dinosaurs with you. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you have to, to help with that? 
Um, very similar to what I did before, I'm going to do uh, Perception and the Discovered Dinosaurs to take that to a two, and then I'll roll. Okay. I can render assistance with Intimidation if we just need to get them moving. <laughs> um, should we do that? It's up to you. You can do that. Certainly take it down to a, to, to a one. Sure, let's do that. And I rolled a 14. Okay. Now, I haven't done this yet for you, Stephen. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So uh, you will drive some of these micro raptors in front of you. And guys, I assume the, the rest of you are kind of moving like from rock to rock coming up behind um, and uh, uh, sort of pushing, pushing forward. And I would like to offer you an intrusion uh, and given your limitation you cannot decline it so why don't you take an XP uh, and you can give an XP to someone else um I'll give the XP to Kaylee okay um as you are moving up and you kind of get close and you're kind of driving the last of these there's a screech and a bunch of these micro raptors come pouring back out and you'll hear this flutter um and you will see uh come out uh, uh of uh, the uh, vent uh, a set of uh uh nereza um these aren't big uh monsters um uh, but they are nasty wicked beaked things um, and this pack kind of comes flying out, um, and uh, you're going to have to make a speed test to to dodge them. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, so the Nereza, um, uh, with their attack there, um, I believe, are uh, difficulty six. Ooh. Okay. Um, so... Let's see what I have. Um, I have read the signs when I'm watching the creatures around me. I see what they're paying attention to, and I'm trained in assessing danger to take that to a five. Okay. That that that's that moment that you catch it just before the flock comes out with their razor sharp talons, uh, great beaks. Um, you spot that. Anything else? Um. I move, I'm fleet of foot, which is a difficulty two speed roll to move longer distances. So I think I can get out of the way faster. Um, sure, if you want to spend those points. Um, actually, it doesn't spend points. I just have to make a, a two speed roll. Okay. But. Um, well, I'll do that as an asset on that. Okay. So, so you're at difficulty four. Yeah. And I'm going to spend speed points. Okay. Make it a three and I'll roll on a three. Okay. You need a nine or better. Yeah. And I rolled a 16. 16. So you are, they come by, and it is a flock of these razor sharp uh, birds that come pouring out of there. And they are up in the air kind of circling around. Um, so let me come back and check with the rest of the group and see what you're doing. Um, uh, Kaylee, you've been kind of the scout person, so you're probably on point here. Um uh, what do you do? Uh, yeah, so Kaylee, Kaylee's pretty fast to react. She's got initiative skill. Mm -hmm. um, and she also has um, she also has a big shield. Um, so she's probably trying to like get up to the front and and kind of take take as draw as much attention to herself himself okay. as, as, as he can. So is your goal to to draw the attack to you on the following round so that no one else gets attacked? Yeah, I was thinking either draw the attack to me or like shield anyone who like looks vulnerable. Um, okay. In the instant. Well, I, I will say that yeah, if you want to do that, that will will have the the attack be on you as you kind of draw their attention. Um, we'll see then uh, what the others do in the meantime with this flock. Uh, Halen, what about you? I'm um, putting my um, 
sights on to see if I can shoot any of them with my headset laser gun. Yes, uh, you certainly uh, could uh, uh, do that. Uh, so they are difficulty five uh, to, to hit them. Um, is uh, in the character sheet. Uh -huh. oh, hang on. Oh, yep. hang on. No, I was looking at Lyle's. I don't, um, I don't. Damn it. I want that headset. <laughs> Give me your headset. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, I have, oh, I have a sonic grenade. Do you yeah. want to throw your sonic grenade? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You may throw the sonic grenade. Okay. Oh! Um, so I'm going to say uh, that uh, this is a, uh, I will offer you an intrusion, which means that I offer you an experience point. And that experience point you can use later to re-roll rolls. Ooh, what's an intrusion? Better. It's that's that's where I do a hard move on on the character. <laughs> okay, um, but you also get an experience point you get to give to somebody else. That sounds like fun. Okay, uh, so take that uh, uh, experience point. You can mark that for yourself. And which of your three companions do you want to give that experience point to? Ooh. You probably don't want to give it to Mar because she's about to give you an earful. Well, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, all right. I'm I'm gonna give it to um Lo. All right. Uh, so I think that I need you to make. You're definitely gonna hit, and you're definitely going to disperse this gang of birds. That's that's a given right now. The question is how much collateral damage is going to occur from the sonic grenade. <laughs> uh, so I think the difficulty right now is a four to keep it from screeching outside um, uh, or bringing the whole uh, uh, tunnel down. Does that seem fair? Yeah, that does seem fair. Okay. Um, um, so, so this is an intellect test. Difficulty four. I'm smart. So okay. <laughs> does that <laughs> well uh you can spend uh we can do one spend from your intellect pool you can spend two points from it and that'll reduce difficulty down by one level you can do that once no nah, i don't want to okay so, <laughs> uh difficulty four do you have any other any of your special abilities that you think would be appropriate um i really don't think so I would okay. argue that a sonic grenade qualifies as technology. Oh, yeah. That so... seems fair to me. Cypher's built for generous uh, GM. Yeah. So oh, difficulty yeah. now is just a three. All you need to roll in a d20 is a nine or better. All right. Do it. 19. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty good. Uh, yeah, you are. Um, somehow you managed to throw it uh, such that the grenade goes off and uh, the while the tunnel shakes, nothing gives, and the sound is kind of muffled by that, but the, the, the sonics are at a level that these birds react to. You probably set the dial to the right uh, uh, setting on it when you threw it, and they will disperse. And no one's dead. The sound doesn't carry very far, um, and you seem to clear these birds out. Still, done. Mar, Mar will hiss, fighting them out here? This is a stealth mission. Could you be any more conspicuous? And she'll go diving into the, the fumarole. Meh. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Mar, uh, I, I hear now that, that you are, are taking the point, taking the lead to move down into this volcanic set of tunnels here. So she runs in out of sight and then remembers that it's booby traps. So if the booby trap is here, she probably walks face first into it. Yeah, let's have you spend the, uh, I'll give you that intrusion. I will take it. I always take intrusions. Okay. And you get an extra experience point. Uh, well, uh, I think that uh, Helen spurred me into this, so she should reap the reward as well. Okay. So, 
you kind of rush in. Your temper's gotten ahead of you. Uh, uh, that sound at grenade has gone off, so it's got to be all clear. And there is that bit when when you come through and uh, uh, you realize that there is a, a detector that you've hit. It's raised up high, uh, and you've kind of just crossed into it. Um, and uh, it will trigger something. I need you to make a difficulty five speed defense roll. Okay. It was nice knowing you guys. Um, well, I don't think that any of my skills here are relevant because this is a surprise and Mud is not so great at surprises. That but I will work. spend some effort. Okay. Uh, so that takes me down to six speed. And that means I'm looking to roll a 12. Is that so? That is correct. Okay. Here goes. That's not what I meant to happen. Let the fate die. <laughs> How You're do right. I get rid of that? Uh, I can discard that. I'll get it. Okay. Let's try that again. Oh, okay. Die fate rather than die 20. I pushed the, uh, I hit the checkbox on the wrong side. Right. Uh, Easy to do. How's this? Ha! Huh. So there is that bit uh, uh, as you kind of dive down. Uh, when you smell that scent of burning hair um, and whatever head covering you had probably ignites My uh, uh, from the, the, the laser there that kind of cuts across essentially to, to, to keep the corridor clear and it kind of hit the ground. That smoke will kind of roil off the back of your scalp, um, but you are uninjured. Okay, so while whoever's coming up behind, I just put up a hand to stop them. <laughs> and I say, um, I have located the trap on purpose. <laughs> uh, having spotted the booby trap, this one you don't even know need to roll to, to, to disarm it. You can easily do that now that it's been discovered in this most uh, uh, in inventive way. Um, <laughs> Uh, and if you wish to, you can proceed down uh, the, the the lava tube, the fumarole, down uh, into the bowels of this complex. Halen, would you like to try to take the laser with you? Yeah, and like <laughs> attach it to my head somehow. Okay. <laughs> um. So I, I let's. I my my default difficulty is five for these kinds of complicated tasks. So I'm going to start with that. What do you have that's going to take that down? Well, for a start, Blink is pretty tricky too. And uh -huh. she could, um, she's probably taller than me. So she'd probably be able to like unhook the um, device quite easily. Perfect. Um, Difficulty and, four. Yep. And uh, I can also. Um, Hack it. Okay, it's certainly. Uh, yeah, I'll give you for your hacker. Um, I'll give you a a uh, a point for that. Uh, so let's take it down to difficulty three. Um, and uh, which of your skills do you think applies here? Um. Ooh, technology. Okay, difficulty two. All right. Just need a six or better. Easy right now. Oh, this doesn't seem to like Mozilla. Let me just open this in another window. La 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 la. Ah, roll 20. Okay. <laughs> Did that just re roll a 19? That's. Uh... I clicked it and I hit submit. I'll, I'll re roll it again because no one's that lucky. Okay. No. Oh no. I was hitting submit, not reroll. That makes sense. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No one is that lucky. Nine. Nine. Uh, so yeah, you get this uh, headset mounted laser for yourself there. Um, okay. Um, it won't last uh, beyond this. It's kind of a, a, a temporary solution, but you do have that. Fantastic. 
So, Kaylee, this is another one of those situations where the group kind of moves forward into this lava fumarole, they kind of move on. They've all got these small dinosaurs, right. you know, right. uh, and uh, uh, there is that moment when uh, uh, September kind of looks at you like, Right. Come on, you can do it. I think we're actually going to have to have you make a a roll uh, because this is not something that she necessarily wants to go into. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Your interaction with her is a three, so that's difficulty three to convince her to do something she wouldn't normally want to do. Okay. Um. So what can I use to? Could I use some food? I have survival rations. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, spend okay. those. That's an asset. You can spend that, and that will take that down to a two. Cool. Um, and I think uh, I think that's I think that's what's going to happen. Okay. So it is a difficulty two, which means you need a six or better. Right. And that's a 12. That's a 12. It bows down. <laughs> a, a lot of the actual interior buildings are built quite large. The hallways are large to accommodate dinosaurs. You know, yours is, is tall, uh, but this thing is not. Um, and so she does have to kind of go down further. Um, and uh, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a fairly tight fit for her. I think, I think she kind of waddles along a little bit and she's leaning so far forward, but you'll see as she's walking, you know, her front arms kind of move as if she's trying to move along. They're not, they're not touching the ground. They're just, you know, mimicking like she was going to run with them as well. That's, that seems fair. Who is at the front? Um, I, I think after seeing, Seeing Mars Mars attempt, um, yeah, Kaylee's gonna gonna grab the shoulder and be like, no, 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 let let me go first. If you insist, darling. Uh, all right, uh, so uh, you will move along further through this set of tunnels. Uh, you've clearly scared out uh, the bird flock. <laughs> Uh, so it doesn't seem like there are other uh, 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 dinosaurs in here deeper. And you're going to try and find your way through and uh, uh, moving along there. Um, I would like to offer you an intrusion now. Yeah. Okay. We'll um, uh, so I'll give you a, a point and you can hand a point off to someone else. Okay. Um, I will give, I'll give my point to Tamar. Okay. Thank you. Um, you are moving along and did you hear the rumble from time to time? The volcano is clearly active and, uh, uh, you know, you've got that sort of, uh, melted rock around you. It's hot in here. It is hot, and it's that dry heat dries all the moisture out of your body. Um, you know, if you've ever been in a desert, you know it, it's that kind of heat that that roils here, kind of almost distorts the the air around you. You get that pressure of it, and the walls themselves are hot, so there's like no cooling rock relief anywhere as you're moving through here. Um, and you're moving along through this vent, and you have gotten ways into the tube tu tunnel. When you realize that it kind of ends, because it looks like a section has kind of collapsed uh, uh, ahead, um, and it kind of ends, and there's some some rock and stuff. And if you want to press on through this tunnel, you're going to have to figure out a way to clear that. So you're at the front. Uh, Do you need a grenade? <laughs> <laughs> Could do that, maybe. 
uh, September's behind you, so you two kind of have to to deal with the situation because September really can't turn around. Sure, sure, yeah, that's that's fair. Um, Those little dino arms going. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe um, yeah, maybe they'll they'll work together to leverage her her big strength. Um, I have um, I have an. Ad- Adventurer's pack would that have like a, a useful thing like like some rope or a wire or something that I could lash lash it to and like you know get it around her and get her to yeah that seems fair uh, so let's start at difficulty of four if you spend your adventurer pack like we're playing Dungeon World uh, we'll go down to difficulty three um, what else do you think is appropriate there. Um, I mean, I could, I could burn some, some might on that as well. Maybe I'll be yeah. up at the rock, you know? Absolutely. Um, and that's, that's all the good ideas I've got, but okay. I feel good with that. So, so difficulty two, six or better, all right? You're going to break through. That's not a problem. 17. Oh yeah. You push. Through, what does that look like? Uh, yeah, I think we find like the biggest rock and we get it lashed and 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 she starts pulling and it doesn't quite give and and Kaylee like gets up in there and kind of squats and gets her legs in and, and pushes off the wall and and it all comes comes crashing down and, and makes you know a cascading kind of kind of thing happen. Perfect, perfect. Um, and you kind of clear that there'll be a, like a release of, of hot air and trapped gas. You guys kind of wash over you cough at that. Um, and it's not far past that, uh, that you actually come to some like poured reinforced concrete in some places, uh, leading to a, uh, uh, a, a door that is sort of inset in some of these uh, uh, concrete here. Um, it looks worn, a little bit rusted, um, but you can see that it definitely has a standard uh, fingerprint lock uh, a mechanism, electronic fingerprint lock mechanism to get through. So what do you want to do? Psst, I can deal with that. Look expectantly yeah. at technology girl. Yeah, Kaylee's Kaylee's gonna back away and say, if... there "Is that bit probably where you have to slide past the T Rex <laughs> to get up to the door? Because um, the tunnel here is is fairly long. the the door, door itself is is quite large. Um, all right, so you want to break in here. Um, uh, the The lock is a uh, difficulty five to hack. Well, I'll just reach into my backpack and pull out my fingerprint smart lock. Is that is that to unlock? Oh, sure. Lock? Uh, that let's say that'll help you with that, so that'll go down. Yeah. Uh, so difficulty four now. Yep, and um, I can. Ooh, I have um, understanding machines. Uh, or uh, or use and repair machines technology I've got so many skills difficulty three um yeah let's um let's go with that okay uh, uh you could probably bring your companion up to, oh yeah to... yeah yeah of course of course um blinks in there so she's you know doing that thing where she's you know around like like an emu heads kind of coming. <laughs> Go through. Yeah. Uh, difficulty two. All right, let's smash this. Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> you release the lock, and uh, the the door will kind of grind open, and kind of peek through the gap here. You're up close. Uh, a light kind of comes in that sort of reddish light of lava. Um, and you can see that there's, there's a big chamber. Uh, there's 
like a caldera. There's there's lava sort of on the flow, floor, and there's walkways over it. Um, and it looks like the walkway goes around the outside and goes out towards those buildings, the front doors. And then uh, there's another set of doors that uh, are off to the side that looks like it goes into the main part of the complex. Um, and uh, you will definitely see that there is a cyber dinosaur guard positioned on that walkway. And that's where we'll take our five minute break.
So, Michael, did you guys do pretty well for uh, your housing lottery for uh, Gen Con? Oh, well, uh, Stephen and I are VIGs, so, you know, it's like not a thing. Oh, that's cool. That is awesome. So, this door has partially opened. This dinosaur seems to be focused on the Passover from the the main way over to those lab doors. So you could conceivably try to move behind it, but you are out and kind of exposed at that point. Um, so what do you think you want to do? I assume you guys can pull back uh, uh, to back to the door and, and talk about this. Uh, you still have radio. If you want to activate that as an asset for your plans or or whatnot, what do you think? You also have some delightful ciphers. Um, I might be able. It is it. Is this um dinosaur working? Of his own accord, or uh, kind of take a look uh, at it um, from here. It clearly has a, a, a CyberSat system for orders. Uh, it probably has some kind of recognition system for who is supposed to be allowed to pass, um, and uh, it's clearly been uh, gene modded to have uh, heat resistant scales. Um, so it's probably uh, got, I mean, it, it's operating on some very basic programming. How does it? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry and I didn't mean to interrupt you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any chance I could hack into these um, simple programs remotely from a distance will be difficult um i would say the difficulty to hack it from here would be a six has anyone got some other cool ideas well i have an idea that might coordinate with yours uh i'm going to uh spend an intellect point on understanding uh, which is my ability to look at something and just sort of get a gut feeling about how to interact with it best. Um, and after spending a, you know, a little bit observing the situation, I will make a few suggestions to uh, Helen about things that might serve as good distractions. You know, like things that the programming would probably recognize as something meriting attention that is not us. And I should mention, Helen, that uh, on top of that, that one of your powers is that you can essentially spend points so that it can't act. Oh. That crossed wires ability you have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so essentially you can spend an intellect point to make it not act for a round. Yeah. Um. While it is not acting, will it? Is it basically catatonic? Like, is it having a seizure, or does it? Is it still aware of its surroundings? I think that's probably catatonic. Interesting and useful. Well, Halen, so, if you can do that, what about? paralyzing it or you know for a moment and letting september you know knock it off into the lava yeah i'm, I'm okay with seeing this guy lava fired what are the rest right. of think? yep okay yeah uh, so I, I pull out my cool little remote Control hacking device. Beep boop beep beep boop boop. So, uh, right now, uh, that'll take you one elect point to, to activate this device. There's still a role associated with it. Um, essentially, 
Uh, to shut it down uh, is a difficulty four roll with this crossed wires ability. Um, all right, let's do it. Okay. Uh, so Smash any, it. I think. 17. 17. You didn't even bother to take down the difficulty. You're like, I'm going for it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, so this thing like freezes in place. And with a 17, you get us, uh, you know, you did very well. It's kind of close by. And so you want to have September knock this thing into the, to the lava? Just give it a bull rush. Or a tail sweep or something, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, I believe then that uh, we do this as an attack roll uh, uh, based on, on might to hit this thing. Um, uh, and uh, you've got the asset of, of it. Um, right now it's, it's held in place. Uh, so it's much harder to hit than it usually, much easier to hit than it usually would be. So the difficulty is a four, actually probably a five to, to push it off into the lava. So does, does September do this or am, am I so, doing this? Uh, you actually do it. Uh, okay. September okay. is kind of, uh, a, uh, uh, a, a tool in the process. Okay. Um, so, 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 so we're at a four and it's a might. Um, yes. Do you have any abilities or skills that would, uh, uh work with this as uh, with your training as you work with him to do this? Yeah. Well, can I like, can this be like a duo kind of thing? Like, can, can Kaylee be up in there helping Oh yeah, shenanigans? absolutely. Okay, well, um, Haley's Haley's got a big mace, um, so could I get an asset to like run up there and like kind of hit him off guard a little bit, or like knock him off balance? At which point, sure, um, kind of a, a setup thing. Okay, they'll have to lower the difficulty by one. I was cool. going to say you're trained in balancing, so you probably have an understanding of where best to apply pressure to knock it off balance. Difficulty two, then. All right. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go with two. Let's see it. Uh, it's a six. Which is just what you need. So <laughs> tell me what this looks like. And it isn't pretty. <laughs> sure. Um, so I think Kaylee Kaylee kind of like runs ahead um, um, with this with this mace and kind of like in going past like hits out one of its one of its legs like in a in a run by kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, so it's knocked off balance um, at which point September comes up like charging in. Um, and yeah, it's it's just kind of messy. They're like grappling with each other. Um, it eventually gets like turned over the the railing or whatever. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, and it, and it's it, these are six sec six second rounds, so you've got that that back and forth, and eventually it will the Aptosaurus will go off the side of it, and it's a pretty long drop down to the lava. Um, but still, when it hits, uh. It will hit, and there will be that splash. Um, and I need uh, you to make a speed defense roll against a difficulty of four as okay. the lava comes splattering up at you and uh, September. All right. Um, so um, 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 did you say this was a speed? speed yes, thing? it is. So, so can my, my shield, um, that helps me with speed defense. Yep. Absolutely. So there's a one, um, difficulty three. difficulty three and I will, I will, yeah, maybe I will burn, um, some more speed okay. to bring it to a two. Difficulty Kaylee's two. probably like, 
yeah shield out trying to like make sure let's see dino it. doesn't get oh, oh that's a two so what's that risk here some uh damage to you and uh, uh setting off an alarm setting off an alarm i don't like that one uh okay i will uh i got experience oh i will reroll okay And a 15. That's 15. A nice um, you will, uh, September will push you back. You'll go back and there'll be that great. I mean, it takes you a second to realize just how much sort of how close the lava is and how, how hard this dino hits, but there'll be that great big lava splash. Where he's uh, silhouetted against the glowing lava. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you're kind of running back. I mean, and it'll hit all of these walkways and stuff. They're all tempered to be resistant to that, but there's still this, these, this hot molten stone that, that hits and begins to, to cool and solidify there. Um, but you are uninjured. Um, uh, I assume, uh, you wish to, to push on into the main facility now. Well, we definitely don't want to stay out here now. <laughs> um, so my question is back to Lao. You talked about having a timer for radio. At what point does that go off? Is it is it now or is it at some point in the future? No, I don't think it's gone off yet. I think it'll be in the future. I think that whenever we entered the tunnel, we made radio contact and we keep radio contact. And we keep doing this as we get further and further in. Uh, well, actually, you've lost radio contact once you come inside the facility. So once we get to a point where we lose radio contact that's where the timer starts with radio and i think i think we said something like two hours right okay um so the the lava has splattered that the 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 dinosaur struggles briefly in that superheated lava for a bit and then goes under um and uh, uh because of the sort of the the reinforcing here uh, to keep it cool and temper, any noise doesn't carry out of here. If people come through, they will notice a the absence of a dinosaur, and b uh, the the great masses of splashed, uh, slowly cooling lava around on the various walkways. Um, so, assuming that you wish to push forward into the main facility, uh, who is? Who is taking the lead? Who is who is on point here? Is Lana just... probably needs somebody to prod her because she's staring just appalled at the frying dinosaur. Um, is this just a regular door? Uh, kind of, it's a it's a reinforced door to the facility, obviously uh, made to be more solid. Uh, uh, you know, to to resist the heat and such. Um, there's a, a you know a, a fingerprint device. Um, and it seems it would probably go into the lab itself. That's that's clearly uh, the heart of this place. And I, did you say that there was another doorway here as well? Yeah, if you go across the now lava-covered uh, walkway, uh, the other set of doors goes out front to that place you saw the buildings and such when you were observing from the outside. Okay, yeah. So I say we go into the lab. Um. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, who is who is taking point? Who is the the person at the front? Um, if no one else is particularly um, keen, I can imagine Halen's pretty pumped to look at all the cool toys in there. Okay. All right. Uh, go up and uh, uh essentially uh, can can uh, open the door. Doesn't look like it's locked. Uh, and yeah. it will open. Uh, and again, dinosaur-sized hallways. So the 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 we're talking 20-foot ceilings. Uh, all the hallways are at least 20 feet wide. And uh, you can see that the corridor kind of goes down and there are various uh, uh, older markings, uh, labs, uh, vats, uh, vat controls, research, bioreactors, uh, library, mess hall, uh, uh, all of that kind of stuff here. So, Halen's drooling. Um, 
and uh, equipment storage, um, that kind of thing. Um, and when you open the door, uh, there, you know, there are a couple of people in that hall that are kind of walking there. What do you do, Halen? Um, step out and shut the door behind me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, with or without dinosaur? Uh, um, so I'd open the door. Yeah, open the door. And then, like, close the door immediately. Okay. Uh, so so do you just yeah. shut it? So. And just go, um, all right. So we do need to go in there, but we're not alone. And... Oh, I don't know how easily we can blend in. Mar takes her the ruins of her beret off and tries to like pat down her hair. I think, um, I think Lau turns to Mar and says, I think you get to talk us through it. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, we might, how many did you see? Mm, three, maybe. Do, do we think we can rush in, jump them, and muffle them? Yeah, you guys would definitely be able to do that. I'll just wait here. I mean, that's Kaylee's jam, so, so, so I would do that, but hopefully, hopefully not solo. Yeah, that is not my jam, but maybe I can, you know, convince one of them that I'm more dangerous than I am. Ooh, laser head. <laughs> that that does uh, seem like a, a possibility. You guys have, have laser heads and things like that. Um, and as you're kind of discussing that, the door... Yeah. <laughs> kind of comes open <laughs> and you see this guy um, who is kind of walking out there a couple other people in the hall and he's like got his clipboard and he like goes kind of stands there for a second so Mar jumps forward with her shiv and try to tries to like hold it to his throat like freeze <laughs> all right uh, difficulty uh, three intimidation check uh, this poor helpless scientist with a, a clipboard. Um, well, I am trained in intimidation. Uh, Me too. And and if like I'm also like pointing at my laser head. <laughs> laser head. <laughs> Is that, okay. Uh, does, uh, difficulty does that also, one. Yeah. Difficulty one. Oh, for heaven's sakes! You want to okay. roll it, Michael? This is worth an XP to me. And no, honestly, it is more hilarious to fail. Will you guys mind if I fail it ignominiously here for the lulls? Lull it on. Okay, so I'm thinking she rushes forward to like put her knife to his uh to his throat and manages to get the clipboard in the forehead and then trip over his feet and just splat on the ground. Okay, um, uh, and, and you kind of splat down and you see him pull out this can of mace. Uh, uh, essentially this uh, like pepper spray and gets it out to, to spray you in the face. Um, what are the rest of you doing? Pointing and laughing and making popcorn. <laughs> uh, there's think... a, uh, uh, a scientist with a clipboard who's going to uh, pepper spray uh, Mar in the face. Uh, there are two people in the hallway who are back away and are like, you know, because they've never seen you before and think that's what's going on. Uh, let's start with you, Lau. I think Lau sees Mar kind of take a take a face plant, and he goes. He kind of put puts out a hand and says, "Don't worry, we're here to rescue you." <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so, what's your intent here? So, my intent is to provide uh, two things. Number one is to, to provide a little bit of distraction. Okay. So, if so like it would kind of be an asset if someone else decides to waylay them on the side of the head or number two, um, if these people are, I don't know, 
tasked with doing the menial chores and they are being kept here against their will, this is a good chance for them to identify themselves. I say you definitely get an asset for distraction because this guy's like, what are you talking about? What do you do, uh, Kaylee? Have have the others, the, the other people in the room, have they... In the, so big hallway, you know, cross corridors. They're kind of in the crossroads of this corridor, just kind of standing there. Like one of them's probably got their lunch tray. Um, you know, uh, got his little juice box. He's put the little straw in it. Uh, uh, the other person, you know, has some papers in their hands. And but they they've definitely seen us. Oh yeah, they're like they're kind of frozen yeah. with a, you know, because that that one that one lady drew a knife and tried to put it to the guy's throat. Sure, sure. Um, I think Kaylee's goal is probably to like get on the other side of them and like knock them back into the room and then close the door. Um, uh, so, so you have to go down in the hallway and then try to herd them back, back oh. down here. Oh, so they're they, way down the other. They're not the door. The, imagine oh. that the doors have opened and there's a big set of corridors oh, in front gotcha, of you. And gotcha. They're kind gotcha. of a ways in. Right, right, right. Scratch that. Um, in that case, um, yeah, maybe she's like pre preparing. Actually, she's got that that thing I haven't done yet. Um, the like sleeping. You know, if she does nothing on a on a round, then like stay calm. She does super damage next time. That is perfect. Um, and uh, then, uh, Halen, what are you doing? Still pointing at my head. Okay. Um, looking down at the guy with mace and like Jesus, and like like doing some hand gestures to the people down the corridor like you come here or laser you here laser okay uh so i'm gonna say uh uh right now uh the one person is sort of uh uh out of the sequence because the the one intimidation role failed um but the other two you can try and and get them to 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 freeze up uh so difficulty four because there are two of them uh, a test of uh, uh, intimidation. Uh, it'll be an intellect test. Uh, I'll give you an asset for having a laser on your head. I have a laser on my head. Um, ooh, I, um, yeah, okay. I also, um, I'm going to use some intellect points. Can I use two intellect points? Uh, so t if you spend two, it'll go, the difficulty will go down by one level. Uh, mm -hmm. So it'll be uh, a difficulty two at that point. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, let's do that. Okay. So you'll just need a six or better. All right. Ten. So guy drops his tray, you know, and, and they kind of put their, their hands up. Um, and uh, this person is going to spray you in the face, Mar, uh, because that's what he was doing. So I need you to make a difficulty three speed test not to get maced. Okay. Well, I have no valuable things to add to that. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna straight up roll it. Okay. Well, um, that's encouraging. What'd you get? I got a 19. So, uh, uh, the little pepper spray sprays out and will completely miss you. Um, what do you want to do? This is a male scientist, right? Yes. Since I am on the floor, there's a vulnerable spot available. Mara is not a very nice person. Fair enough. Difficulty three to... Uh, um, Disable him. Disable him. Uh, so that will hit... Um, uh, essentially you'll, you'll 
crack him uh, in the, the midsection there, and he will stumble back. Um, so what do you do now, Kaylee? Uh, those two kind of raise their hands and kind of, you know, standing, you know, maybe moving forward slowly. Uh, um, uh, Mar has, has uh, 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 hit this person in the jimmy. Um, and uh, 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 it's still a big haul. What do you want to do? Uh, I, I think at this point she'll try to like, like con converse with these people. You know, we don't actually want to hurt you guys. Like we're we're here to save you. Um, so okay, um, let's. So you want to convince them that that you guys are on their side? I guess so. Uh, Kaylee's probably not the best person to do this, but I was going to say. <laughs> Um, so maybe, maybe she'll continue with the, with, with the intimidating, you know, she'll, she'll take out her spear and she'll like, I guess they're far away. Oh, uh, the okay. one on the ground. She'll like, she'll like put a, a, a spear to his neck. Um, just okay. in like an intimidating fashion. Get this guy, uh, uh, you know, the, the one who, uh, uh, did the pepper spray, get the spear on him. The other two don't want to get hit by a laser head. Uh, so their hands are up. Lau, what are you doing? So I think Lau says, um, let's get out of the hallway and um, motions for the two that are still out in the hallway to come into the room. If we can get everyone into the room, we'll close the door and then we'll have a nice little chat. So you want to have them, they're going to have to come down the corridor to where you and go out into that, that big uh, uh, lava room. Yeah. I think he's okay. saying get out of the lava room. Well, no, no I, I would say he's saying let's get out of sight in the lava room. Oh. Talk about things. Because we don't know whenever someone else might wander by. Okay. Um, to get control of the situation, to get them to come here, uh, I think it's going to be difficulty three. You've got uh, intimidation as an asset that's already on the table. Uh, so difficulty two. Okay. I'll roll it a two. And I rolled a 17. Okay. Um, so they don't know what's going on. They're clearly not here against their will. They're clearly scientists working on a project. And, but you guys have laser heads and <laughs> knives and spears and uh, T-Rexes. And um, 530. You know, and they will they come walking forward cautiously. Um, uh, they'll, they'll help the pal up who's, doing that um and they kind of walk and and they'll stand against the wall like don't kill us so what exactly are you doing here we're researchers what kind of research what do what do all kinds of they clearly kind of like takes a bit to get the bit of the, you know we've got the, the 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 threat here um but like we're, we're temporal researchers um so some of our friends came and we are looking for them but they were not um they were lost here um has someone been are, are you do you have prisoners have you been killing people uh, uh no nobody's gotten killed no and one of the guys, there are some necessary people we had to add to the team. So I, I think we just kind of, okay. So Lowell, remind me a couple of sure. sessions ago, we were sent here to collect the people, or we were sent here to take out the base. So you know, were sent here with with uh, three purposes. Uh, determine if Rados has, in fact, gotten this temporal technology up. Mm -hmm. Second purpose, if he has, get a hold of it. Third purpose, if possible, rescue the, the, the scientists who were taken. Ah, so we were here on for information and to steal the technology. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, that sounds good. And I think I turned to Mar and say, you know more about the time stuff right 
I would need close exposure to extract anything useful. And do you guys have it working? Uh, Dr. Rados has some, made some advances. We came across um, a distortion as we came close. Um, would this be one of the advances or is this just a mistake? Well, there are time anomalies all over the place outside. I mean, okay. it's, that happens all the time, but we may be to stabilize. They kind of shut their mouths at that point. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where are the people who um, are being kept here? Uh, there are some researchers down in the in uh, uh, Lab Delta. Okay. I know that they they brought some of the people in. What about the rest of you? Do you want to? Is there any, any information you want? Where's the gear? What gear? What are you talking about? The good stuff. The time stuff. Show it to me. Tell me That's, where. We've got. A couple of different labs. I mean, you could. I mean, what do you want? Tell you what. Uh, I am actually trained in drawing. Uh, while they, I, I'll get them to describe to me the layout of the areas they know, and I'll sketch us a quick map. Okay. Quick. Um, uh, and uh, they will, will quickly sketch out a map. Uh, time is ticking. They're missing. If not to guard dinosaur into the lava. Right. Uh, you know, there's a, a time coming. So you kind of sketch out. It seems to you like uh, you've got sort of three options. Um, there's a, an equipment sort of backup computer center. That would obviously be a place to, to go to get uh, the, the, the tech and the records and things like that. There's Rados's lab in another direction that you go to, to to figure out what's going on there. Or there's the other lab where those scientists are. I think the scientists take priority. In this map, did they mention any broom closets or similar? Uh, not not precisely. Uh, um, it's a it's a facility they do have, you know, probably some, some janitorial facilities, but there's probably about 60, 70 people in there. Okay, I'm looking for, like, I would rather not kill these people if we don't have to. I'm looking for some place we can lock them up until this all blows over. Okay, uh, that seems fair. Yeah, uh, um, I, I would say that's, a, that's uh, certainly we can, we can take them off the table. Okay, that's and, all I was looking for. Mother's sure. not nice, but she's not evil. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, I think we should take their clothes and wear them just to fit in a little bit better. I want to go to Radas's lab. Those other guys sound boring. I want I want all the cool tech. So, Halen, which is more important? The information that you could use to reproduce the tech or maybe the tech that you can't carry out yourself? This might be pretty big. Kaylee's strong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. And, um, you know... Seeing things in the flesh isn't the same on paper. And some secret scientists don't always put all their info in their notebooks. Okay. Well, we don't have time for a lengthy discussion, so show of hands, I think it's clear there are two wings we want to go visit. So who wants to go to Rados's wing first? Who wants to rescue the scientist first? I'll go to Rados's ring. Let's do that. You were so, just trying to talk her out of it. Okay, fine. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you can grab, uh, essentially, they have very basic uniform jackets, uh, uh, things you can pull on. Uh, they do have uh, what appears to be like a, a security pass one of them has uh, to, to handle sort of dino security, so you can grab that. Um, uh, so... 
if you walk fairly calmly, put away, say, the spears and the, the knives, um, and uh, don't don't rush. Um, uh, you can certainly make your way down these halls without people saying anything is weird because you're in here, you've got jackets. This is a large staff in here. I mean, once, once, I mean, once you're walking around, they don't think anything of it. Um, uh, even the, the T-Rex doesn't seem to draw too much attention. Um, maybe some people look cause they haven't seen you before. And maybe they see the, 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 the burnt mark on the back of Mars head. Um, but, uh, 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 you guys can can walk on down, um, and you'll get to uh, essentially Lab Omega, uh, Rados's lab, um, and it actually has. Whereas some of these other places seem to have basic security, you know, scan pass to get in, it actually has a, a, uh, a like a fingerprint scan security lock on it. Like it's clearly the the center of the place. Other guards. Uh, uh, any guards that you've seen have just been kind of walking around. There's none posted on this door precisely. Okay. Well, then we wait until, I mean, we fly casual until between the guard patrols and then we do something quickly. Um, I think this is Halen's, you know, move. Yeah, this is your wheelhouse, dear. Yeah. Halen, you want to, you want to hack the door? Yeah. Hack yeah, all the doors. Hack yeah. all the doors. All Take right. this game to Planation door hack. <laughs> uh, difficulty five to do this without setting off an alarm. All right. Um, I'll use an intellect. Okay. Um, for my hacker ability. Okay. Um, so. Uh, Let's say difficulty you go down one. You've got tech. They'll go down another one. Um, um, and yeah, I think I used my fingerprint smart lock thing already. That's probably not something yeah. I could use again. Nope. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. So three. Yeah. Sixteen. Yeah, you get this open. Door opens. Um, big lab. Um, you can see that there are consoles around. There are, are power systems. Uh, you can see there's a, a number of scientists in here. They're, you know, in lab coats and gloves and things like that. And they kind of look at you. Cause... Okay, somebody opened the door. Um, and uh, in the middle of the room, you'll see that there is a shimmering bubble um it looks like an anomaly like you've seen before where you get that distortion it's probably about 20 feet across uh and it's a it's a sphere and while it's wavering it's it's the most stable kind of time anomaly you've ever seen um there's all kinds of machinery holding that in place um and uh one of the scientists kind of walks over towards where you're at. Are there any dinosaurs inside the room? Uh, are there any dinosaurs in here? I don't think so. Uh, it looks like they keep uh, dinosaurs clear of that uh, to keep the place uh, essentially clear and safe. Um, so while she's unlocking the door, I'm going to take an action to do a recovery roll. Sure. Yeah, just kind of rest up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. That anomaly in the room, can I access it with time tap? Let's see here. You will have to get up to it to do that. Okay. That is a device card. A scientist walks over and, and uh, uh, she says, uh, can I help you? Uh, yeah, no, uh, my key pass was just having difficulty. So I'm just um, entering in manually. Uh, and who are you? I am to inspect the security systems. Okay, uh, okay, I'm steps back. Uh, you know, no, no dinosaurs in here. These are these dinosaurs have been um, given permission by uh, Dr. Rudd. No, this is a clean room. We can't have dinosaurs in here. 
they are going through the project that tests uh, dinosaurs. I have to call the uh, the lab supervisor before that happens. That that's uh, protocol. Seriously, we ha you have no idea how much paperwork we've put in. You should have been told. Did you check your email this morning? Um. Uh. uh this is a standard operating procedure. Um, difficulty six, if you want to try and <laughs> talk, talk down this bureaucrat, this is where his strength is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. He's going to let you in, but he doesn't want the dinosaurs in here. Okay. All right. So um, I think that I look like i'm meant to be here i do i do have a lab coat on underneath my difficulty like, proper, five proper jacket um and i will um get um blink to um repeat the protocols that he's meant meant to be doing as a test dinosaur so to He's doing binary. Okay. Uh, so, uh, all right. Uh, so, difficulty four. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's probably all I can do. And all right. So, 12 or better. Well, actually, I can offer something. Mod is, after all, highly trained in the art of BS. Uh, so, this whole time, she's filling in this complicated technical sounding terminology about why the dinosaurs need to be included in this particular project. Uh, uh, difficulty uh, will go down by another one. So we're at difficulty three. All right, let's see how we go. What Not did you so want? well, sorry. Shouldn't have opened my big mouth. I've got three. Okay. Um, so I will uh, offer one of my XP for a reroll to Kaylee because we like we don't need this one to fail. I think. Okay. You go for, to Haling, rather. Right. So what'd you get on a reroll? One. Can I use one of my XP? At this point, though, the reroll has been done <laughs> and gone. Uh, so, uh, good. uh, you guys, and this is a long way down the corridor. Um, and this guy like hits the button to, to call the supervisor. Even as you see kind of come around a corner down the hallway, like a security team running. Um, like, hey, one of our dinosaurs is missing. Let's, you know, there's something going on here. People are gone. And you'll see this team. They've got a couple of raptors with them. They kind of hit that hall and they see you guys out in the hallway. Um, so you're at the doors for this big lab room. There are ways down the hallway coming this way. This guy has just buzzed the head supervisor. What are you going to do there, Kaylee? Um, I, th I think we should all barge our way into the door and then, and then close it behind us. Okay. Um, um so you would just want to, uh, you and, and September essentially push your way in. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's a role for you in a T-Rex. Okay. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you just can just push your way in, uh, uh, devices will get knocked aside. Tables go down. All the scientists in here are like, turn around. Like what's going on? What are you doing, Lao? Um, I think Lao steps inside. Um, I don't imagine Posh is too excited. Um, this is a big room. It's a yeah. huge room. Yeah. Yeah. Posh can come inside. Okay. Uh, uh, Posh will come in. Uh, uh, what about you, Amar? Uh, Mod was already inside the room because she was talking to the scientist. Okay. And she has had a recent lesson in why she shouldn't be too hasty to act. Um, she will take a moment to kind of crane her head around the door and see how many are the security guards approaching. 
uh, like, like a quick four, ice four, assessment. Yeah, uh, four guards and a couple of raptors. What are they armed with? Uh, looks like carbines. Uh, uh, simple mag, uh, mag launchers with needles. Okay. Well, that's I suppose better than lethal rounds, probably. Oh uh, um, well, they're they're lethal. They're just needles. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so you're in the room, and uh, 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 are, and uh, you are also in the room. Then uh, uh, Halen, and uh, you hit the doors shut uh, as you go by, Kaylee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And doors will slam shut. Um, and these scientists are like, "What is going on?" And they're, you know, clearly going for for whatever for alarms and stuff. Like one of them will pick up like a pen and like hold it like. At a dangerous level. They've got maybe somebody's got a ruler or a protractor. Um, what do you do? Does... Uh, Lau, Lau steps up to one of the machines and starts pulling data off of it. Okay. And how are you doing that? Um, I think I pick up thumb drives or whatever it is I think is close. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me have you make a uh, 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 intellect test five. To see what you get, um, I think I'm good at identifying things. Okay, so I'll make that a four. Difficulty four. And I think I'll roll it a four to see how what my chances are. Okay, I got a seventeen. All right. Uh, so yeah, you're grabbing stuff off of this. Uh, what are you doing, Halen? There are a bunch of scientists. That, you know, they're like, well, what is going on? I slapped a pen out of one guy's hands. <laughs> okay. Like, no, no, you just sit down. Don't worry about it. Um, and I just go over to the equipment and, like, look for any components that I might be able to, like, pull out and, like, maybe I have a little camera that I can take some cool photos of um, some things for... So, so is your goal to get info, to steal stuff, uh, to stop the machine? What? Um, get info. Okay. Steal so, stuff. Okay, so let's start with the get info. You can spend your hacker thing to essentially to 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 plug into one of these terminals to start ripping data off of it. Yeah. Yep. That sounds great. Um, and also, um, I've trained Blink in all all this. Um, gear too. So maybe Blink is the one um, like plugging data data disks in and ripping the info down with with Lau. Yeah, it's got got a whole whole set of a uh, 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 little little thumb drives and stuff that, as yeah. well that you are yeah. are, are plugging yeah. into to download Stash that. Um, uh, these scientists are kind of freaking out. Um, uh, what do you do uh, then, uh, uh, Kaylee? Um, if I look around the room, do does anyone strike me as like being more in charge? Um, yes, yes. There's somebody over by the main machine who has kept quiet and is standing over there by it. And uh, uh, whereas the other people are picking up defensive stuff, they've just kind of slid off to the side to get behind something. Okay. Um. Yeah. Kaylee. Kaylee's gonna charge at them um would i be able to get to them and and do an attack or are they far away absolutely absolutely i've got a t-rex you can cross oh, that bound in sure. in a dash perfect um so yeah i'm uh, gonna to, jump on oh go ahead multi four to 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 hit this person okay um so yeah i think that so I think um, it's going to be on top of September, charging across the room. Okay. Um, and as he gets close, um, is going to like jump off with like the spear out kind of, kind of, kind of action going. Okay. Um, so maybe my jumping can knock that down one. All right. Um, that sounds good. And my my goal is to to, to do the the swipe thing. Um, so I want to like. Stun, stun this guy. Perfect. And 
so what am I? I'm at a three, right? You had a three right now. Yeah, I'll I'll do speed um, and and bring that down to a two. Okay. I want it to work. That's a twelve. Perfect. He goes get get him knocked down. Goes flying. Machinery goes crashing. Uh, uh, the two hackers are ripping things off from from the data here. The guards are outside the door. This time bubble is there. Um, what are you doing, Mar? Uh, do you mind if I start with what are you doing, Houdini? Yes. So Houdini is going to pounce on the scientist that has just been knocked down and try to pin down his arms while he digs through her pockets with his nose looking for anything he can steal. Okay. <laughs> And Mar is going to stalk up to the time anomaly and tap it. Uh, her query is to ask the anomaly to rate the equipment stabilizing it in terms of safety of removal and then portability. Okay. Uh, let's have you make a uh, intellect roll. I think we're talking difficulty six here for this. Okay. Uh, Yes, she's rude. Well, it's what it is. Does my proficiency in identifying device functions help? Yes, it does. Okay, so I'll spend intellect. We're at a difficulty class four. Yeah. Let's see if we can get a free useful answer. And if we can't, that's not the end of the world. 19. 19. The, the system is sort of uh, uh, set. There are bits and pieces that you can do, can grab, but a lot of this machinery and a lot of this energy is devoted to keeping this time anomaly stable. Like that, the whole point of this place is to do that. Uh, so it is very delicately balanced right now. Um, well, my concern about safety is less sure. about preserving the time anomaly and more about preserving us. Yeah, you're not sure what will happen. <laughs> Uh, so you're, you're, you're un, uncertain. Uh, you know you can take it down. Uh, you don't think it's going to be lethal, but you don't know what's going to happen. Well, that sounds perfect. Not lethal, and it's going to cause chaos. <laughs> uh, so Mar will start uh, calling out for Halen which components to remove. Again, prioritizing first by safety, then by portability. Uh, Lau, you're stripping uh, data off this. Uh, Halen, what do you want to do? Yeah, I want to um, take all the things. Okay. <laughs> let's let's just have a simple D20 roll. I want to see the level of, of tech theft that you're getting off of this before this anomaly blows. Seven. Okay. Um, you are there, Kaylee, uh, as they're they're grabbing all this tech stuff. This is not your forte, right? Um, not at all. Not at all. But you got the scientist pinned down, and the scientist is kind of panicking. Um, and uh, uh, you probably will kind of get yourself... Uh, uh, you know, looking around, and you will notice that as they're pulling this stuff up, that bubble starts to kind of shimmer. And then it will explode outward. Um, and as it passes through you, um, uh, everything kind of changes around you. Uh, that wave kind of washes across. Um, and, uh, I need you to make, uh, a, uh, intellect roll for me here. Difficulty four. In fact, I need all of you to make that roll. Difficulty four, intellect. <laughs> um, could I maybe pick up cues from, um... From 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 September perception tasks. That is perfect to me. All right, that's three. And then um, should I go really low on intellect? How dangerous Good. is that? 
Uh, you've got recovery rolls. I do have recovery rolls. Yeah. I'll do that. Okay. So that's two. Is that right? Two. Six or better. I'm going to come to Lau next. Fifteen. Lau, what about you? Um, uh, perception. Um, and then I'm going to spend two levels of effort. Take that. It started out at five, so that's a two now. Okay. Okay. And I got an eight. Okay. Uh, Mar, what about you? I failed the roll. Okay. We'll come back to you in a second. Uh, what um, about you, uh, Halen? Um, I, I used two of my intellect points. Okay. Um, and I rolled a nine. So would that be a fail? You're perfect. Just... That's just enough. So there is this wash across. And three of you, after it washes through, um, kind of look around and you're in the same room, but uh, it's like abandoned. Like machinery is kind of rusted and sitting in corners. Everything's covered with a fine layer of dust. Um, uh, it looks like it hasn't been used in years. Um, and you don't see Mar. Um, but you got all that stuff. Your pockets are filled with tech. Um, uh, Mar. When this time anomaly blows your compatriots seven years into the future, where do you end up? Um, I think... that I fly through a number of sequential time sequences. So I'm seeing, you know, like, I'm seeing the future, I'm seeing the past, I'm seeing the present, uh, and- That's because you time tap, so you're connected into this thing. I finally land in the day that the meteor first becomes visible in the sky. Okay. <laughs> there, there, And there is that bit. We do know that it did create uh, uh, some glow, and again, by the time you come out of here, this this facility is is old and ruined, and there's probably cracks that the volcano has gone off. Um, so uh, you will make your way out of there. Um, is Houdini with you? He was across the room from me, so I guess we roll a defense roll for him to find out. You tell me. All right. Then, uh, then no, I think he's with the others. Okay. Um, and it'll be that shot we see of you looking uh, uh, up into the sky, seeing that glow and kind of immediately realizing <laughs> what is coming. Um, back... In the past seven years in the future in this facility, uh, you three will hear that that kind of squawking cry uh, as this uh, uh, raptor uh, there kind of calls out for Mar, but Mar's not there. I think Lau will calm Houdini, yes. Calm him down, get get him him settled, um, uh, and you guys can get out of here, tech in hand, uh, and uh, head out uh, into into the countryside. Um, and that's where we're going to end the session. Sounds good. Thank you guys very much. Uh, I appreciate you, you uh, 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 playing along with this 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 system that I'm still getting used to. Um, uh, and uh, this setting that there's there's some bits and pieces I really like about it that I'm still trying to, to work out. So uh, uh, 
but I, I would like if uh, since we've had three sessions and Alan, I'm going to put you on the spot since you're just in here for one session. Um, I would like to take uh, time to do those roses and thorns, uh, you know, about the mechanics, about the the, the adventure, uh, about how I ran it. All of those things are are sort of on the table for for thorns and then roses, and we'll do thorns first. Um, and Stephen, is it okay if I start with you? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's start on the thorn side. Let me start with you. Um. So thorns. Uh. Out of the so I played in all three of the cipher games that you ran this month. Yeah, you did. Holy cow! I did. I'm a big fan of cipher. Um. So it was good. Um. So I like the system. I did find that it detracted from the story a little bit. Um. Out of all of the. Uh. Different genres i thought i would like i thought i would like this one the most mm -hmm. and it fell a little flat for me and i'm not sure exactly why um i like dinosaurs i like uh cyberpunk i'm not sure exactly the mix of it was good and there were some really really good parts but maybe i was looking for something else and i don't know what it was yeah i i wonder how much this setting really blooms over a long term because there's so much stuff to it. Um, I, but yeah, I, think I, I, I get what you're saying. I think for me, there's something that I was looking for that I didn't recognize that only during this session do I realize that there was something specific that I wanted from the game, but I can't put my finger on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, what about you? Uh, thorns we're doing? Yeah, we'll do Thorns first. Um... I don't know that I have any great, great, helpful thorns to throw your way. Um, I felt like maybe you didn't get as much time this session as you had on the previous ones. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, but I still felt like I had good moments and, okay. and um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh. Yeah, sorry. I want to give you some things. No, no. I, I think that's that. That's fair. That's fair to say. Um, Michael, what about you? So, is a thing about this setting, uh, like this particular version of the cipher system. First of all, the ciphers just kind of don't make sense to me how they work. Yeah. But, but also the dinosaur mechanic. I understand why they have another player play the dinosaur because trying to get them to do what you want is supposed to be challenging. But it means, I mean, they're one of the big features of the system, and they tend to get swept a little bit away. It's hard to get any spotlight on them. Um, and this last thing is just a comment about the Cypher system in general, which you know I love. I'm going to be running it at Gen Con. Being trained in a skill, it kind of feels like it does something, and then you get into it, and it's like being trained doesn't really do anything. You need to be specialized before you really have a leg up. Yeah. Uh, it, it and and it makes it so that buying a skill as one of the advances kind of feels very weak. Um, fair enough, uh, Ellen. We dropped you into the mix heavily this session. I appreciate your your rolling with that. Um, so, do you have any feedback? Any thorns uh, from the play this session? Um, uh, probably only that um, I would have liked to see um, the characters interact with each other a little bit more, but that might this might not be the game for that kind of mm -hmm. thing i think um this seems like a very like plot and mechanics heavy thing and not necessarily about character development but that's okay it does, every game doesn't have to do that I, I will say so the scenario itself that's as written is pretty much just this last session uh, is the the sort of get to the complex? Michael's played it at 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 Gen Con. So the other stuff, the journey and the tournament, that's all stuff I came up with and and gave us space to do that. Um, yeah, and I right. and I I think if I, I have to be honest, I like those sessions better. So because, did I, honestly. Because yeah, because I think you're right, Ellen. Because those those would have been the sessions that we did get more of a chance for people to interact. And those are the scenes that I I adore. Um, so. If I thought about it, I, w I probably could have retooled this part of the module, part of the adventure, to, to do more of that, and I, I probably should have. Uh, Maybe uh, like this alongside that uh, more like character-rich 
section would be like a fun fun thing too but yeah. um yeah just for like my one session <laughs> that's, oh, no, that's, that's, that, that, that's that's absolutely fair um I will say that that's one of my things is that, of course, the uh, I, I wish I had tuned this last part a little bit better. Um, and I see that that now I did dig some of the stuff. I, yeah, I agree with the thing on the dinosaurs. Um, I, I've read through the rules and I think there's some real gaps about how you're supposed to use dinosaurs and 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 when they apply and when they don't apply. And it does seem to me to be a kind of overly mechanized taking it out of players hands and and making it harder to use and and i, I love the dinos i love having pets um i, I think that's awesome uh, it's why i back familiar zatera um you know uh i think that's so cool and i love that concept and i i if i were going to run this i would definitely make that uh, uh easier to work with and and uh, easier for the player to engage with and clearer about when you could or couldn't use the dinos because uh, i think that that it's a it's a feature of the setting it needs to be developed more you could probably like hack it as um the the dungeon world ranger class and yeah have them as your your companion animal that you know you operate i yeah. often see, i often see the dungeon world ranger character end up you know again as kind of a second you know the the wolf is a secondary thing um are there other role-playing games that do companions well? I think 13th Age does it well um, because it, it is a set of actions that you can do, but but then you get to play them out. And um, uh, at least with the Druid class that's in 13th Age. Okay. Um, and, I, and I think for Familiar Terra, I, I think also does it really, really well. Uh, oh, available on Kickstarter right now. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh Stephen, let me come back around to roses. Yeah, um, so I like the system, and of course I like dinosaurs and cyberpunk. I mentioned that. Um, I'd actually have to say that one of my favorite things, and it's because it's fresh in my mind, was I loved radio. Radio was awesome, and you role-played role -played them really, really well. So, yeah. Yeah, that was a fun NPC. I like yeah. that a lot. Ellen, thank you for throwing me that. Um, just that name, and, and it gave me stuff to hook onto, so that was great. Um, I love those kinds of things. Um, uh, Kyle, Roses? Yeah, yeah. It was my first time playing Cypher. Um, and, and I found the whole the whole negotiating thing really fun. The whole, you know, what you want to do, knocking it down. That was a, that was, that was a fun game. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a neat approach. Um, uh, the, the hit points as some of your resources, too, are, are, are make for a really set of uh, tough choices. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it would be interesting to see it in, in long term play, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Um like 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 a lot of things, I guess. But yeah. But yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 it's it's a really well developed world. I think uh uh Shannon Germain did a great job. There's a lot of a lot of richness uh in the setting as it's presented. Um that, that deserves more exploration than just a few sessions. I right. think they might be doing like Twitch videos or something like that. I, I think they're doing it of one of their games, like Invisible City or something like that. Mm -hmm. But they might have some predation stuff up there that might be worth going back and checking out. I, to check see. That out. I, I hadn't thought about that, but it might be, you know, to see if I could figure out what, what I was looking for. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Cause they may be, may be tweaking different things than I was doing there. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael, uh, Roses. So, we, we're doing Roses just now for all three sessions, and there's something yeah. that I've been meaning to tell you since the first session, which was that I thought that the tournament idea was very well executed as a way, I mean, you knew you had new players who had no familiarity with Cypher, and introducing them to how the rules worked in that way, it went very smoothly, everybody understood what was going on, uh, you gave them a chance to learn about just using skills, and then we sort of zoomed into a, okay, here's a more combat-like scenario where there is still the chance to use your skills creatively, but mostly we're just demoing the combo engine or the combat engine here. I thought that was very well done, and you really, really kicked the uh, intrusions into gear in this session, and that was much appreciated. I think in, the intrusions are... 
closed center system. And it seemed like earlier you were a little shy about overwhelming yeah. people with this uh, with them, and this time you just went for it. And I think everybody loved it. Yeah, the definitely definitely the, the the mechanism for the hard move there is is really interesting. Um, I, I, the tournament, I want to say, uh, that concept comes from a, an introductory module for a game called Weapons of the Gods. They did this uh, module called Auspicious Beginnings, which starts out in a tournament, and it's they have these different people who these different factions in the tournament, and um, it's really well laid out. And I've I've stolen that that structure and that concept several times. Uh, it's it's a really good way um, to to establish some of the background and get to try out different skills and things. And I I am so glad that it worked with this game uh uh because i was a little nervous about that so i'm glad you like that um ellen i'm gonna give you last word here besides me <laughs> um yeah considering like first time to the system like dropped in on the third game of the series um i didn't like i felt quite that I was absorbed into the game really easily um, um, and I really in, enjoyed like the, the, um, the mechanic side as well, as much as like you can't have everything. Mm -hmm. The mechanics are still really fun. Um, the setting's really fun. Um, dinosaurs, awesome. Time travel, awesome. Um, laser heads, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and again, it's it's really great to play with you, lol. You're um, you're super super fun, but um, also have a way of like bringing the seriousness into situations too. Like you you do actually have um some concept of like your actions having impacts on the world and those around you. Um, and it was really lovely to meet um. You three players, Kyle, Steve, and Michael. I haven't haven't played with you, and I'll be happy to to jump into games with you guys again. Because um, yeah, you you all brought something really fun and interesting to the game, and really, um, I, I love how how I I felt like I knew your characters, or like they were they were really strong, and um, it was really great to see them play. Yeah, Ellen. Yeah for for being thrown in this last session for being brave and, and coming in it did a great job just awesome uh just i can't can't say enough about that um, we knew who your character was right away oh yeah <laughs> uh that that's and i think that's dynamite to to when to, to go okay i've got one session here's my character i'm gonna get that i'm gonna play to it that i think that's really really smart and, and sharp uh for this kind of thing um and everybody else I really liked your characters. I, I like the relationships you had with your dinos. Um, I, I like the play of that. I like the sense I got of everybody. You know, there's there's a there's a lot to to unpack and and really dig about that. Um, so yeah, uh, my my rose there is that th there's a lot of mechanics, but you guys pushed past that, and I got a strong sense of character. It even past those those mechanical moments, and I felt felt like that was was strong. I'm going to stop the recording, and uh, I'm going to be done. And this is nine sessions of Cipher uh, done. This is the very last one uh, uh, for the, for the month, and I appreciate you all going on this journey, especially Stephen, who was here with, along with me for the entire journey. Um, uh, Kyle, great to play with you again, yeah. and Ellen, great chance to play again, and Michael, first time I got to play with you. Uh, mm -hmm. and it was a real pleasure. I, I yes. let me say this: um, you clearly know Cipher, um, and I'm always nervous about that when I'm running a game uh, with somebody who clearly knows it strongly. And I appreciated how generous you were in in letting me go and giving me pointers from time to time. And so, really nice job. Oh, you were completely fine. I remember the first gen, the first Cipher system game that I played at Gen Con. It was Numenera, and. Uh, it was very clearly the GM's first time running the system and he didn't really know how the rules worked. And between my husband and I, we basically ended up like halfway running the game for him just because he, did, he didn't know how any of the rules worked. Uh, 
Yeah, I, know, I appreciate that. Um, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, I will. I will hopefully play with you guys again.